but we should keep talking. So yes. People know that we are live. That's the general idea, and you, you're welcome, folks. Because <laughs> pretty sure when you go mute and 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 you silence everything, people tune in and wait, and then they leave. Right. <laughs> and wait, that's not what I tuned in for. <laughs> Well, this is great. We have 25 people. It's just, it's climbing. It's climbing. All right. That's good. Okay, great. Pile them all in. <laughs> Everybody gets a seat. Sit far apart. <clears throat> There's talk of our local theater, which has been closed down. My son works well, worked there. Um, <laughs> but the local theater is telling the high school and the junior highs that are relatively close to it, if you'd like to use our theaters for lecture halls, you are welcome to do so. We will have them cleaned and we will clean them after you leave. Um, you know, the space is open. They're obviously large venues, uh, which I thought was a really good idea. I, you know, everybody's got a theater in town. They're certainly not using them. So, you know, it might be worth the effort. Yeah, I agree. All right, I am going to mute Jake, Tim. Great session. We'll have a great session. Don't worry, everyone. It hasn't happened yet. All right. <laughs> All right, everyone. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Uh, my name's Jake Alverson. I'm going to be moderating the session. Uh, if you have any questions at any point during the session, please uh, use the Q&A tool at the bottom of the Zoom, and uh, I'll do my best to get those questions answered for you, or you can enter them into the chat, um, into the chat tool as well, or if you just want to converse with your fellow attendees, we can do that too. Anything that I can't answer, we will make sure that we have Tim address at the end of the session. All right, well, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So hi everyone, we're gonna get started. Uh, it looks like we have about 60 or so participants, so we'll just get started. Um, so again, my name is Jake Alverson. I am a product specialist here at Tech. Uh, today's session is gonna be with Tim Tommaso, channel manager over at Wonder Workshop. I've personally been working with Tim for probably about two years now or so. And uh, Tim's great, he knows so much he's so in tune with what schools need right now in terms of remote and hybrid learning and just from personally working with the wonder workshop team they've done an amazing job with their class connect solution and really making something that's going to be effective for stem learning uh remotely and for hybrid learning so with that i'm going to pass it over to tim and uh let it take him from here thank you jake much appreciated let me know if you're seeing my screen just give me a thumbs up yeah. All right. Very good. So uh, again, everybody, welcome. My name is Tim um, with Wonder Workshop. Uh, and thank you for taking the time out now. I know you guys are supremely busy. Uh, you know, it's total chaos around here. I'm in the Chicagoland area, as you can probably tell by my cap. And uh, kids are doing everything they can to get ready for school. We're getting emails at home every other day. It's, you know, a little chaotic. So I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, STEM solutions for the new normal in our K-8 schools. Uh, new normal, you can see there's in quotes because <laughs> quite frankly, uh, none of us really know exactly what the new normal is going to be and probably won't for a while yet. But uh, that's what we're here to talk about, what we've put together uh, to address the situation uh, since the pandemic started, um, what we've got in store for you for the upcoming school year, whatever it looks like, uh, what our solutions are to the problem and how we could best uh, help you guys out. So here we go. Um, all right, so three weeks into July, I just went on to my Twitter feed and my Facebook uh, and just grabbed a couple of images. Um, you know, trying to express what's going on in the world right now is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, what's going on with our teachers and our schools and the education system in general is even more so. But to suffice, suffice to say, it's a little chaotic and it's a little bit of a question mark right now. And none of us really know what to expect or what's coming. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting year, that's for sure. Uh, you'll remember this year for a long time. That's what I'm looking at. So uh, a lot of questions and um, hopefully I can answer some of them for you uh, right here today. Um, 
here we go. Okay, so when we go back to school, uh, a number of states, uh, including the one you're in, has probably already discussed the plan, or maybe it's district to district, school to school. Uh, schools are coming back in a lot of different ways. Hybrid learning, face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, there are districts that are already saying we're not coming back to school till second semester. The colleges have a plan. The elementary schools have a plan. Uh, everybody's got a different plan, so there's a lot to look from. Uh, one thing is for sure, schools are going to rely on distance learning in some capacity. Um, how much is depending on where you're at uh, and how well your system is prepared and things like that. Um, and quite honestly, what the pandemic decides to do. I'm sure if it gets worse, we're all going to rely on distance learning a lot more. And if we somehow get this vaccine to work, we could be, you know, back to school full force uh, as early as the holidays. So, you know, uh, we know there's going to be distance learning and we have addressed it that at work. Uh, we're doing our best to provide those tools for you. Um, schools may eliminate elective classes uh, and curriculum in many hybrid models. Uh, the first thing to go is probably going to be your electives. Um, you know, your core classes are probably going to be the things you, you concentrate on first and foremost. I'm sure you guys have already heard your plan at your own school. Uh, what my kids are being told uh, is that their elective classes are going to be secondary. They are going to be, uh, you know, on the odd days of the week and the, they're going to be done from home, if at all. A lot of them are being eliminated altogether. Uh, my daughter is in choir. Uh, they haven't figured out a way to do choir safely yet. Uh, so right now that class as an elective is been eliminated from the building and they're going to find a way to do it at home. So again, distance learning uh, for these hybrid models. Uh, what will the mix be? I don't think anybody knows for sure. And it's going to vary from program to program, from school to school. So again, it's a lot of question marks and a lot of weird pictures that we're seeing on the internet and floor plans of buildings and, and spaces and what they're going to look like with uh, social distancing in them. Um, it's a little crazy, no doubt about it. So what is the school going to need? Uh, and, and this slide is actually, you know, from back in March when we were developing our plan to handle a worldwide pandemic uh, with kids being at home. You know, what did a teacher need? What did students need while they are at home? What did the parents need while they were at home? Uh, when suddenly the teacher is no longer the teacher, but she's more of a facilitator from a distance and the frontline people helping your students out are your parents it puts a whole different dynamic into the ball game here. Um, so, you know, we broke it down as best we could and took a look at the research out there and decided that, you know, if we were going to make an e-learning tool, it had to fit certain criteria and we worked on it pretty hard. Um, it has to be blended, which basically means it's got to work as easily at school as it does at home. It's got to be seamless. Uh, and I will show you that transition between working with a physical robot and using our virtual robot in a moment, a little bit later on. Uh, but that had to be part of it. it, had to be seamless, had to be a smooth transition. So no matter whether the kid was at school or at home or a combination of the two, uh, we were able to approach them, have our curriculum and our challenges ready for them. So had to be blended. Um, easy but anytime access from anywhere. Uh, you know, it's got to work on a variety of devices. Uh, the kids don't have their infrastructure in place when they're not in the building. They don't have their labs, they don't have their carts, they don't have their devices. Uh, they're learning on whatever they have at home to work with, which might be a shared device, which might be a single computer at home, it might be a laptop. We have made this particular part of our curriculum and, and solution uh, accessible from almost any platform. Uh, there, as long as your machine is, uh, you know, capable of getting on the internet, uh, you should be able to access the virtual robot. So uh, you could do that from pretty much any device. Um, it had to be learner-centric and it had to engage the students. Uh, if you're familiar with our curriculum, if you're familiar with our robots, our puzzles, our challenges, our competition, anything we do, it is very uh, learner-centric and definitely engages students at a very high level. It's just the nature of what we do. They love to code with dash and dot. Uh, if you can provide that same type of feel uh, at home, which we think we have done, uh, then it'll keep the kids involved at home as well, which opens up time for parents who are at home with their kids, which opens up time to have them doing something besides watching Netflix or, you know, goofing around on their video games. So, you know, a tool that will actually gather their attention uh, and hold it and allow them to explore and to create and to engineer, 
that's fantastic. That's something that we, we strive very hard to do. And uh, again, I'll show it to you soon. Uh, solutions that allow the teachers to track and provide support. Our Class Connect system allows you to track your students through all of our puzzles, all of our challenges for both Dash the Robot and Dot the Robot. There's hundreds of challenges that are lined up that are all aligned, ready to go. Uh, learning the six basic building blocks of coding. What a sequence is, a loop, a function, a conditional. All that is introduced in a very scalable, simple to uh, uh, learn approach uh, that the kids will build on, that they will work their way through, that they will enjoy doing and they won't want to stop. It's one of those types of things. They're gonna stay at it until they get done uh, and you're gonna be able to track that. And if a student does run into a problem, if they're struggling with loops, if they're struggling with a variable, you will have the ability to send them more resources. You can uh, send the lesson home if you want. You can provide uh, uh, added support through challenge cards, through uh, um, cross-curricular lessons. You can even see the solution that the student is struggling with and their solution and, and, and formulate a plan to get them back on track. Um, solutions that provide parents knowledge and tools. We took some steps, uh, like I said, back in March to uh, create a home learning kit uh, one of which is a parent crash course in using our robots. Uh, it probably would take your average parent 15 to 20 minutes uh, to get through it. And it, it shows them the do's and don'ts of working with Dash, working with Dot, working with Q, uh, so that they can learn quickly and understand what their children are up against, if they have the tools at home or if they're using the online tools, and they have a, a, a basic knowledge of what's going on uh, so that they could provide some support. So here are those home learning kits that I was uh, referring to. This is on our website. Uh, there's a section for the educators, a second section for the parents. These are all activities that can best be done at home. Of course, they would make excellent classroom projects as well. Uh, but you know, the idea was our students may be at home doing this type of work. How can we best support them? This is what we put together. Again, this is on our website under home learning kits. It's all free. Uh, a lot of downloadable type of activities. There's a lot of off screen activities uh, to do coding and computational thinking skills uh, without the use of a device, without the use of a robot. Uh, so it's that type of work and that is all free of charge sitting on our website ready for you to go pick it and download whatever you need. Okay. Uh, is the video going to play or I got to play it myself? No, nope, video is going to play. So here I'm going to introduce Class Connect. This is our learning management software. Um, I thought I had that on autoplay. And uh, what this does is it tracks your students' progress through our puzzles, through our system, our basic training system where you learn the uh, basic controls of the robot, uh, what a sequence is, what a loop is. We introduce all the six concepts and we run them through a series of lessons that get more difficult as they go along and we track their progress and can provide support with this tool as well. And once our little video is over here, I will stop and share this with you uh, from my screen. I hear this music so much I hear it when I go to bed at night sometimes. Um, <laughs> All right, so I am now going to exit and switch pages. Uh, if anybody's not seen my page, now would be a good time to speak up, but you should be looking at the portal at this point. And uh, the portal is where a, uh, a, an instructor who had a license or a membership with us uh, does this integrate with Google Classroom? Not yet, it will be the answer. Uh, clever integration is available with this. Um, that's a good question. I know I'm not supposed to answer questions during the lecture. Sorry, Jake, my bad. Uh, okay, so Class Connect is our learning management system. It's just one of the six titles that you can get to here as you log in as a teacher. Uh, if you happen to be in our competition as a coach, you would access the Wonder League Robotics competition from here, uh, which is free of charge, starting year six this year, uh, and allows kids as young as kindergarten to compete in a worldwide competition. It's pretty cool. Um, our curriculum's all here, so you're looking for a scope and sequence, or our online lessons, that's all here. Uh, the home learning toolkits, which I alluded to earlier, our global educator community. If you're looking for ideas, if you're looking for somebody else who's already done what you're about to do, you go in here, you get on our blog, or you go to our web pages and look around, and you're going to find a whole bunch of instructors who are already using our product and 
they like to share. So there's plenty there for you to pick and choose from uh, a lot in that community. Uh, Teach Wonders are professional development, uh, computer science that culminates in using our robots uh, in your classroom. So that's our professional development. It's included in many of our packages if you're purchasing. If you're looking for PD, you can sign up for it. It's about a 15 hour online course. Okay, so Class Connect. I'm gonna click on the first tile here and go straight into my dashboard. So what you're seeing right now is my classroom working their way through the basic dash puzzles. Uh, my students are on the left-hand side here uh, and their progress is being tracked with the green check marks or the orange exclamation marks or the white square. The green mark, of course, tells me that a student has successfully completed the lesson. And when I click on it, I can see the solution versus the suggested solution. I can also see how long the student worked on this particular lesson. Uh, this is an easy one at driving school. You're basically turning the lights on and off. So that's a pretty simple task. Probably took the student, it probably won't take any student more than a minute to get it done. Uh, that's an entry level unit one type of lesson. So pretty easy. Now, if I look at an orange exclamation mark, I'm gonna see a student uh, who got stuck on a basic uh, lesson here. So if I open up this one, I'm going to see the solution versus the suggested solution. I see that the student spent two minutes on it and he's got it all backwards. So there's a sequencing issue here. Um, it may be that it was the end of the period and time ran out, but it might not. Maybe he is struggling with the whole idea of a sequence and keeping things in order. Uh, if that's the case and you're in the building, you are probably able to walk up to the student and discuss and handle the situation directly. But if you were remote and the student was at home, you could hit the more button and you would have a list of resources that are available for you to share with the student or dig in for more information. Uh, if you're familiar with our challenge cards, that's the box set of cards with lessons in it. We have specific lessons for what this student is working on. Uh, B3, 1, 2, and 3 would be uh, on these types of sequences, so it would be easy for the student to do a little practice. Uh, we've got lessons online that the student can uh, zero in on. Um, going over what kind of concepts the student's working on, the cross-curricular connections that might be accurate for this type of work, and of course the computational thinking skills that they're working on while they're doing this type of work. So all these resources are readily available. I can even print out or send home a PDF of the lesson if the student's truly struggling at home. Maybe mom and dad can help break it down a little bit better. Whatever the case may be, you've got the tools to provide support uh, to any student who's struggling. Or let's say, you know, we're getting ahead of the class a little bit and uh, next week will be robot puppy training week. Okay, so I as the instructor, I'm going to take a look at lesson number one. Here's the suggested solution. Dash wants to be petted. Tap start, then push Dash's top button to see what happens. Notice the program is in two stacks. So we're, start gonna, we're gonna start using an if then. We're gonna use a variable here. So this is what I'm working on now. Um, I've got the lesson as a PDF. I can view it online. Here's the challenge cards we're gonna work with so I can you know, set up some stations if I want to before the kids ever get into the coding and using the robot. Uh, here's some cross-curricular connections for later on in the week. Um, and of course, what kind of computational thinking they're doing at this point. So it's aligned, it's ready to go, and you have the ability as an instructor to prepare ahead of time, uh, have a presentation ready to roll, show them how to walk through the steps and what you're gonna be doing, and even have your own robot ready to give an example. So it makes things really easy to track where the students are, provide them with support when they need it. Um, and it's all done in a very simple system that's almost kind of fun compared to most learning management systems, at least it's colorful. Uh, it will also flip over to the dot puzzles. So if you have dot robots, there is a whole set of challenges for learning how to use a dot robot. Uh, that are a little bit different from Dash, but more importantly, it's more curriculum if you have the robots. It's here waiting for you and it's trackable. You can report out on this uh, data if you want to. Uh, you can reset the kids' progress if you need to. You can unlock challenges or lock them down. Uh, in some cases, if you dish this out uh, to the kids at home and they're not gonna be back for a few weeks, uh, they might blast through all of the curriculum. So, you know, careful what you wish for. Um, and uh, this is basically the Class Connect system. Uh, I'm gonna show you the virtual tools in just a moment. I think I gotta go back to the slides on my slideshow for a second first. Uh, but if you have questions about the Class Connect system, pop them in the chat room, we'll hit them quick or I will answer them when we get through with the presentation. Okay, so I gotta move this to get to here. All right, so back in present mode, that was Class Connect. 
And I saw one question in the chat room, is there a virtual robot? Yes, there is, it's coming. Okay, so with Dash's neighborhood, it looks a little bit different. So we'll watch one more video. Turn up the volume here. So this is Dash's Neighborhoods, and as you can see, our artist did a fantastic job. And Dash's Neighborhood will be located and nestled right into the block layout on the right-hand side. And again, I'm going to show it to you in more detail. This is just a video. Uh, but you have the ability now to do all of our curriculum for the Dash robot uh, from a device, from virtually anywhere. As long as you have an internet connection, you are going to be able to access this. And as instructors, you'll be able to track this progress as the students work their way through it. And the kids will be able to share programs with you, to create their own programs and share them with each other, uh, to save those programs and bring them back to school and connect them to a live robot and have them work uh, with the physical robot on the floor. Uh, and like I said, everything's gonna be tracked in your uh, software. You'll be able to provide all kinds of support for them. It just makes teaching this kind of stuff a little bit easier given the situation we're in. Um, even if the kids were back at school full time, it will make teaching this a little bit easier. You can have time where the kids are programming on their device without ever having to connect to a robot, getting their programs all lined up and ready to go. And then once they've passed a check, perhaps from the instructor that says, I'm ready to connect to a robot, then you unleash them on the robot. So it provides you with that sandbox environment. It's pretty cool. Gonna pause the video here. If you just look at the slide, uh, on the right hand side, it basically describes what's going on there. You've got the virtual robot area, your block coding environment, uh, where we add the inputs and sensors. You can zoom in and zoom out. You can move the robot around using the tools on your keyboard uh, or your mouse. Um, so it's, it's a very interactive world. Things move around. It's perfect for young children exploring uh, when they're learning their coding. Okay, so the idea is it's one-to-one -one coding a Dash robot for every student built right into their device. Uh, so, you know, you're going to engage students, you're gonna make coding literacy easy, uh, integrating your classroom and home learning seamlessly, that was the whole point to what we were trying to do. Um, you're gonna use our most popular app, uh, Blockly, the block coding app, uh, at a whole new level. You, you, the kids are going to be able to get through the curriculum whether they have access to a robot or not, uh, which is pretty important at this stage uh, in the world with the COVID virus. Um, setting them up is pretty easy. Uh, you know what, we'll come back to this video. I am going to not stop sharing my screen, but escape and go back here. Okay, so let's take a look at Dash's neighborhood. And I access that right from the teacher page like I would normally, or I could just go to code.makewonder.com. That works as well. At this point, I'm logging in. And I am going to see the profiles of all the students in my class. Here's my classroom. I only have one classroom. Some of you may have multiple classrooms. And what happens is the student finds themselves and accesses their puzzles from the list of available students. Accesses their, all their safe programs, everything that they're doing with the device is going to be available from their own profile. So whether they're sharing devices, whether they have access to multiple devices, all they have to do is access your classroom uh, online and basically click on themselves and they're into their puzzles, their projects, or they can create a new one. Simple as that. I'm gonna to go to somebody who's got a couple puzzles under their belt here. Okay, so I've chosen a profile. It tells me that in the upper right hand corner. I'm Mike right now and I'm gonna to go to puzzles. And if you're familiar with this, these are the dashed puzzles. There's about 32 of them, and they start pretty simple with the driving school. Uh, they work into simple sequences with Dash the Snowman. So I'm gonna show you what one of these looks like. I'm going into the snowman building right now. You watch the little video, our artists are very proud of everything that they have done. And now I have a little exercise to do. Put the iPattern blocks into repeat forever block to create a loop, stack the repeat forever loop under the all blocks. Okay, so I'm creating a loop where the eyes are gonna do something funky and I'm gonna stack that under the start. And when I hit the play button, K 
camera should zoom around to see the eye pattern. There it goes. Okay, so even when we're doing something like the lights, uh, the camera knows to go and work their way to uh, the front of the robot, the back of the robot to see it more clearly. Um, so I could do all of the exercises now. And this one wants me when someone claps. Okay, so if I had to simulate somebody clapping, that's kind of a hard thing to do. What we have here in the lower right hand corner is inputs. So when it comes time to play this program, I have to simulate a clap. So I simulate a clap by clicking on the hear clap button. And you guys probably couldn't hear it, it was very quiet, but there was a clap and there you go. It's pretty much as easy as that uh, to get through a lesson and the kids are gonna progress their way through. Uh, after a while, you're gonna unleash the kids on something other than lessons. You may have them creating their own puzzles of one type or another. So you can create new from one of our templates if you wanted to, or you can just create a blank project. Once the students have worked their way through the basic puzzles, understand how to move the robot, record their voice and play back, mess around with the lights and do the animations, then they can start building their own code uh, that's, you know, pretty simple. We'll just put together a couple of random thoughts here. What color have I used today? We'll go orange, uh, yellow, um, and maybe an animation. So here the robot's just gonna go forward, turn his lights yellow and laugh and when I hit play. <laughs> so every animation, everything that the robot is capable of doing has been built into this virtual simulator. Um, I can even take the controls on my keyboard and wander around if I want to and explore the world, which I'm sure the kids will do. They will find a few Easter eggs in here. Let me see, I know where a couple of them are. If I go stand on this yellow square, a laser shoots at the goat. There you go. See? Not sure what that's all about, but somehow that works. Um, so there's other things for them to explore, but the important part is they have the ability to create a program and to save or share that program. And if you wanted to save this little program that I just made, you would click in the upper left-hand corner. I can share that project if I want to. I can give it a different name if I want to. I can save it as an assignment with my last name, send it to a teacher. All I gotta do is create a code and it, I can, upload another project if I want to. And I can copy this and paste it and send it to somebody else. It's very easy to share programs. So you can assign homework if you want to. You can have children sharing their uh, concepts back and forth with one another. And with the ability of having the simulator here, you can simply hit the play button and watch the robot go through the steps that you're uh, asking it to do. If there's some sort of mistake that needs to be dealt with, you're just gonna come in here and adjust. So it's pretty easy to do all of the coding that we've prescribed for the students in a simple manner online, whether the kids are in class or not. Uh, if the kids come back to class, here's the program that I wrote last night. Um, I wanna hook it up to a physical robot and, and, and do the work here in the classroom. You simply hit the orange plus button here and it's going to prompt your computer or your device to connect to a robot, uh, which I don't even have one turned on right now, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, but that's how easy it is to connect to a robot. You simply click the button in the upper right hand corner. So whether the student is home or whether the student's in your classroom, they have the ability to uh, program and code their way through all of our puzzles, all of our challenges, our aligned curriculum is good to go and ready for them. Uh, and you can do that in short segments. You can unleash it all on them at the same time. Uh, but they're going to have the ability to do this, uh, you know, from any live internet connection. So it should be pretty simple uh, to distribute at home. We've even prepared a PDF uh, with a lot of big pictures on it uh, for the directions to connect devices uh, to a teacher account so the kids can access it from home. Uh, that's something we share on our website. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, you know, it's about a six step process for the folks at home. You access a web page, you click a couple spots on the web page, you punch in a teacher code and off they go. Um, it might require some parental supervision. Depending on how old the student is, they might be able to do it themselves. Um, so it's pretty easy to set up and it's very thorough. Uh, like I said, every one of our lessons, all of our curriculum is built into this. 
uh, and this is our Blockly app. It's the block coding app. It's 85% of our downloads. Everybody uses this one, uh, not only for you know teaching in class, but our competition. Um, heck, when I'm setting up a presentation or a demo, I'm using Blockly for the most part, uh, unless somebody wants to see something different. Uh, and, and that is the tool that we prepared. This has been going since March, since the pandemic hit full force. Uh, the engineers basically dropped everything at work in order to get this set up. Um, and at first there were only a few buildings when we first launched it. We just had to get everything in there. Uh, and they've been adding buildings and little special effects and things like that. Every time I drive around, I find something else. Um, and you know, this is a world for the kids to explore and run around and to practice their coding and to create challenges of their own uh, or solve the challenges that you're going to give to them. That's the beauty of it. Um, so that is Class Connect uh, and Dash's Neighborhood as we have it set up uh, for the upcoming school year. Um, let's see, do I have anything left on my slide presentation? Uh, how to, setting up Class Connect is easy. Uh, if you guys are gonna have access to this presentation, I linked uh, uh, the, the instruction, instructional PDF to this presentation, so you will have that. Um, I showed you around Dash's neighborhood already. Uh, okay, I will share this stuff with you. Hang on, let me hit my present mode. Okay, I guess I did have a couple slides left. So what does this look like when you're purchasing it? Um, we have three basic ways of implementing it. A teacher success pack, a team teaching success pack, and the school success pack. It's The price is all based on the number of teachers and the number of students you are bringing in. Uh, obviously, not every school is going to fit into this particular equation, um, but you know, we will work with you uh, and it, the folks at TEQ are going to work with you to get this done. Uh, you know that. So you present us with a situation, hey, I've got 743 kids I'm responsible for. Okay, we're going to break you up into a couple of classrooms and some smaller groups. But yes, we can address that situation and help you out. Uh, so there is probably a way to do whatever situation you're in uh, and a different way to go about doing it. We'll put that together for you and make it easy. Um, all you got to do is send somebody an email. Uh, so all of our, you know, bundles include all of this now. Um, so, you know, whether you're buying a, a coach pack, a classroom pack, a steam pack, all of them are going to have the online components built in with a subscription, uh, ready to go when you purchase. So the robots would come with all the equipment, uh, the accessories and the curriculum. And then um, the instructor would have instructions on how to log in and access all of the uh, components online. So they're included in all of our bundles moving forward. Um, if you're going to buy Wonder Workshop robots, you're going to get the subscription so you can do it whether you're at home or in the building. Uh, there you go. There's the end of my presentation right there. Uh, so let me stop some sharing and go back to live screen. Wow, I went through that a lot faster than I thought I would, but it gives us time to answer questions. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we have a couple questions. Uh, I think the one of the first ones that I see is, um, are there any discounts for Class Connect for Title I schools? Um, that's a good question. Uh, probably, I would imagine if that's uh, a regular occurrence uh, that you guys are discounted for Title I schools, we will probably do the same. Uh, I know recently I have worked with the Adopt-A-Classroom folks and the uh, Donors Choose folks to get our product, these new products lined up with their stuff. So uh, most of the means that folks go through to do that sort of work um, we're approaching those as quickly as we can, uh, but reach out. We'll work with your Title I school as quickly as we'll work with anybody else. We'll get it done. Another question uh, we have in the Q&A is, can students use their stu uh, student profiles on Class Connect at home and then share the code to have a Dash robot run later? Yes, yes they can. Uh, the codes are seamless, whether you're in the virtual environment or working with a physical robot, all it simply does is take the blocks that you had built and bring them to another screen. So yes, it's seamless and they would work at home or in the building. Awesome. And then a couple more questions we have here in the chat. Um, how do I use this with kindergarten? They're not reading yet. So how would uh, they leverage the Wonder Workshop platform? And then um, also what grade do you recommend uh, starting with Dash and Dot? Uh, I recommend starting them as early as you possibly can. Um, I was in a meeting yesterday with a preschool teacher uh, who uses our products. Um, the Primrose uh, preschool chain of schools is up and down the East Coast. Uh, 
uh, they use our tools um, in their classrooms as well. Uh, we don't give preschoolers enough credit. Uh, they are around devices 24 seven and see folks working with them. They figure it out pretty quick. That being said, if you introduce this to a kindergartner, Wonder Workshop has three non-reading apps, uh, Go, Path, and uh, uh, I mean, I think Ozilo. Um, they're all icon based. They don't require any reading. If you're going to introduce your kindergartners or younger uh, uh, to, you know, uh, these tools, I would start with the non-reading apps, get a feel for the robots, and then introduce Blockly to them. They figure out the colors of the blocks and the first letter of the blocks, the B for backward, the F for forward, the L for left, and the R for right. They figure that out real quick, and they will have the robots running around the kindergartners. Well, I guarantee it. I've seen it. I've done it in 10 minutes tops, and they're, they're coding. Awesome. And then uh, a couple other ones. Uh, one about a concern about students using other profiles. Can students, uh, can a patchwork be used with student profiles? Uh, we are approaching um, integration with Clever right now. So theoretically, that will take it out of the equation. Uh, we are probably going to go through the steps with other providers of that sort and, and work this into their equations as well. That's slow work. It takes a while for the engineers to get it done. It's taken us about three months to get the clever thing set up. So um, it will take some time, but eventually it will be integrated into all of your classroom systems. In the meantime, yes, a student does have the ability to pop into somebody else's profile and work on their stuff or monkey around with their programs. Uh, I've had this discussion with many teachers. They said that's not unusual, um, that they have to go on the honor system and you know have strict rules about students accessing other kids' accounts. Um, I personally, you know, I was a teacher for 23 years. Students would very rarely log into somebody else's account and do their work for them, but I was a high school teacher. Maybe it's more prevalent at the uh, elementary ages. But yes, the answer to the question is they do have the ability until our uh, system is fully functional with all the uh, you know classroom management systems. Mm -hmm. And then um, what is the difference between the subscription and the trial version? Uh, they are identical. Uh, the trial version will have everything that a subscription will have. Uh, it will just end in 30 days. Uh, that being said, if you were to get into a trial for the first 30 days, work with your kids and decided, man, I am totally gung ho, we're getting this. Uh, I'm going to have this integrated in the fall. We can take your free subscription, how you have it set up currently with all your kids' progress in it, and just roll it into a paid subscription, and you will never notice the difference. It'll just extend itself for the period of time that you purchased it, uh, and your, your students will stay in your classroom, and everything will stay as it is. Uh, they can do that. We do that pretty much daily, so no problem there. And then also one from Leslie. Uh, is it on Shop Dewey in New York City? I can take this one, Tim. Uh, so we have these SKUs currently pending. So we have the Class Connect and then the Class Connect uh, SKUs with the Dash and Dot, uh, with the physical Dash and Dot robots are currently pending on Chop Dewey. So we expect those to be up uh, very shortly. Uh, and then last one I see in the Q&A uh, from Tessa is how much does it cost for a Class Connect subscription by itself? Uh, by itself, one teacher 35 students, I believe the MSRP is $395. I'm going to check that because I'm going to make a real fool of myself if I'm not right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm almost positive of that. Hang on, I'm going to the store real quick. <laughs> uh, you think I'd have all these prices memorized, but I don't. Um, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Am I right? I am right. Teacher success pack, $395. So uh, that is an annual subscription, uh, but what should be discussed is it's just not the curriculum, uh, or I'm saying it's just not the online stuff. There's access to our cross-curricular lesson library, which has 136 lessons in it currently uh, that are cross-curricular. If you think about that, that, you know, they're English lessons, they're math lessons, they're science lessons uh, that are based on you having a basic understanding of the robot and having the time to tackle a math robotics type of lesson. Uh, they usually take a day, two, three days, but you're gonna have access to that uh, with a subscription as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then one other one that came in, um, uh, class connection subscription for computer teacher in 19-ish classes. Do you have under 25 students uh, per bundle pricing or is it thir just 35 students and above? Um, you know, that's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me for less than the 35 students. Uh, I'm going to say we would work with you to bring the price down to do that if you knew you were only going to have 
you know, 19 or 20 kids, uh, there's certainly no reason for you to pay for 35 subscriptions. So, um, yeah, we would probably do that. We, we do it when people have more than 35. I don't know why we wouldn't do it for folks who have less. Awesome. Um, so if there aren't any other questions, um, uh, we do have, uh, emails in the chat says we do have some self-contained classes that we could combine for it. Um, yeah, I, I'd imagine you'd find a way to use those 15 licenses pretty quickly. Uh, when, when, when folks see what you're doing and uh, how you are able to work with the students, not only in the building, but uh, quite possibly at home as well, uh, you know, this has become very popular at a point in time where we're, we're normally not very busy. So um, I think once school gets started and people realize what they're up against, we're going to be working this a lot. So um, you're going to have a lot of teachers are going to have access to this and you probably want the extra 15 license, put a few more kids in there, but we'll work with you if that's not the case. And then two more questions that just came in. Mm -hmm. um, so what if we want Class Connect for 100 kids or 200 kids? We will work with you. We have formulas that we work out uh, uh, where we'll sit down and figure out how many instructors you have. If it's just one, that makes it easy. Uh, we have a price per student for a single year, for a two-year and a three-year subscription. Um, so we'll just multiply it out and, and, and throw you a price for having all of your kids in the system at the same time. Um, if you were to take on 200 kids uh, in the system, you saw what my system looks like. I only have 20 kids in it. Uh, we would probably break your subscription into classrooms. You would have separate classrooms with a little pulled out menu and uh, the kids would be in more manageable groups, not only in your software, but on the devices when they logged in. You can't expect a student to go through 200 profiles looking for one. It would take the whole beginning of the period. It would be a train wreck. So uh, we, we break that up into smaller increments for you, but we I've already sent out quotes for 175 kids uh, earlier this week. Awesome. And then I think... Uh... And then uh, a couple more coming in. In the 500 subscription pack, are you able to split up uh, those subscriptions in any way you choose? Um, split up meaning breaking your kids uh, from a group of 500 down to smaller groups. Yes, you'll be able to create little classrooms within your district subscription um, and have smaller increments to work with. It's advisable. Uh, the folks at headquarters are going to reach out to you and tell you that. Uh, they don't want you to put... 500 kids on one to, you know, one classroom. Be, be tough for the students. Awesome. And then um, a couple others that came in. Um, so uh, I teach by semester and students switch to another class in January. Would that affect the pricing? Um, I was told last week that you can't pull a student out and put a new person in without using their subscription. So you would have to purchase not only for your first semester folks, but for your second semester folks as well. Uh, what you should do is probably approach your uh, sales representative about having two six month subscriptions, maybe pitch that idea. Uh, I'm not sure how they're gonna view it at headquarters. We haven't come to that particular situation yet, but we're gonna have to. You're not the only person who teaches semester by semester. I'm sure of that. Also, um, could we see the students' individual lessons? Um, will you be able to see the students' individual lessons? You can see all the lessons. You can see the students' individual, what, what they've written for a code to solve the problem. Yes, you will be able to access that through the learning management system. It's just clicking on a cell. Whatever one they finished, you click on it, opens up their solution uh, so that you can see it. So the answer is yes to that question. Also, a couple more that came in. Um, how much do the robots cost? So what's included in the program? Uh, your basic Dash robot is $149.99 MSRP, so $150. Uh, your basic dot robot, where did that go? Oh, there she is. <laughs> Cam flash back there. That's a $50 dot robot. That's a $199 Q robot. Those are MSRP. Uh, the stuff that you see behind me, you know, um, a xylophone for your robot, which obviously is going to play notes and songs. Uh, there is a sketch kit that I had out for a presentation. Hooks up a marker to the bottom of your robot that actually allows you to draw with the robot on a whiteboard surface because this is a whiteboard marker, which I have left the cap off of and is going to dry out. Uh, there is a ball launcher. There is a sketch kit. 
There are a number of accessories that you can put on the robot. Those are going to come in the package as well. Um, you know, so the robot's going to come by itself with uh, two building brick connectors. Uh, those are these little guys that I got snapped in the ears here. And what you have there is a two by four Lego surface so that you can use your Lego bricks to build whatever you want on the robots. And they'll snap in to the arms or the legs or the head or wherever you want to put them. So I could build a bulldozer bar, I could build a trailer hitch, I can build, you know, pretty much anything I want to do uh, using my Legos uh, and adding on to the robot. Um, so there's a lot of different packages. That's a hard question to answer. What does the basic program come with? Uh, any package that you're going to put into a classroom, one of our bundles is what we call them, is going to come with our curriculum, robots, and accessories, also with uh, a subscription to all the online tools that I was showing you earlier. Okay, and then a couple more that came in. Um, what is the cost for two teachers and 500 students, which I think is it's the around team. the team success, which is 1,795? Uh, I'm looking right now, because I knew you are gonna ask me, 1,695. 1,695. Correct. Okay, and then we had a couple more that came in. Um, is it compatible with iPads? I just saw that one pop in, mm -hmm. Jacqueline. Um, the Google, I'm sorry, the iPad integration is scheduled for launch on August 17th. So uh, the answer to that question is no, not today, uh, but in less than a month, it will be. Awesome. And then a couple more. Um, last one I see in the Q&A. Uh, I teach around 50 students every 12 weeks. Would I need 150 licenses or 50? Um, well, that's something you, you guys have got a question I got to ask at headquarters. Uh, I, again, I was told you were going to have to buy a license for every single student, which seems unreasonable given the fact you're only working with them for 12 weeks. Um, so again, I will ask you to reach out to your sales rep, uh, at which point they're going to reach out to me. Um, and I'm going to be ahead of them because I'm going to go to headquarters after this meeting and say, hey, <laughs> I spoke to a whole bunch of people uh, uh, this morning and they were all curious what they do when they have students who move in and out, you know, at semester break or at uh, uh, term break, or whatever the case may be. So um, let me look into that. Uh, but again, reach out to your sales rep, make a case for yourself. Hey, this is what we do here at my school to teach coding. I work with the kids every 12 weeks. Put that situation in front of us. Uh, so that we can address it at headquarters and come up with a plan that will work for you as well. Okay, and then um, a couple of that I, more that I see in here, um, differences between Q and Dash, and then uh, do you recommend older students for Q? Uh, Q is actually your middle school solution. Sixth through the eighth grade is what we recommend, ages 11 and plus. Uh, the difference between a Q and a Dash robot, okay, they're identical in size and in format. They basically run the same way on the treads. They have the same lights, the same buttons on top. Uh, Q is a little bit different in that it has sensors that go all the way around it, uh, where Dash is just in the front and the back. Q's app is a little bit more complicated. Um, it starts with block coding and it ends in JavaScript. Uh, so it is designed for an older audience. Uh, you should be able to read before you start working with Q. Um, I would say, you know, sixth grade is where we want to start folks on that uh, JavaScript adventure. Uh, but that being said, if you have a school with Dash and Dot in it and the kids have been programming with it at a very early age, uh, I have schools that introduce this particular robot in the fourth and the fifth grade uh, to the gifted students or the kids who have worked their way through the Dash and Dot curriculum, uh, and they are able to handle it. It's not like it's encyclopedia reading, it's just reading. Um, but the curriculum is project-based. Uh, instead of doing quick hits where you're doing 5, 10, 15, 20-minute lessons, these are going to be weeks. Uh, you're going to do a music video. You're going to teach a lesson with the robot. You're going to design your own video games where the robot is part of the game, moving around collecting or dodging objects. Uh, you do an Olympic event. There's uh, curriculum notebooks that come with the Q robot. And in these notebooks, the kids are asked to go through a series of steps uh, to do the project, but we're going to ask them to plan and build. We're going to ask them to test and record, storyboard, uh, and reflect. And each student's supposed to have a notebook that they can refer back to. Unit one is creative writing. Unit two is game design. And unit three is on innovation. And they basically build off each other. Um, and there's a teacher's guide that comes with that. So the curriculum, again, is already aligned. 
already written. It's more junior high school type of curriculum. They're projects. They are going to take weeks to get done. If you think about the idea of programming this little guy to do a music video, that's a lot of movement. That's a lot of programming. You're probably going to want a costume and a stage and a little guitar tape to the front of them and some goofy wig and, you know, uh, or you might be playing a piano or the drums or something. Who knows what they're going to create, but it's not going to be wrapped up in a class period. Uh, the projects that we have for them are kind of long term three, four, five weeks at a pop, um, and that's the curriculum for Q. Otherwise, same durable robot, long battery life, plays and records, lights, programmable buttons. Your Q robot's identical to Dash uh, in, in most formats, just a little bit bigger brain to do uh, more commands at once. That's like the 30-second crash course on Q there, uh, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, a couple more questions that we cut had come in, can we prevent students from moving too far ahead at home? Yes, yes you can, you can lock them down. Uh, you have the ability as the instructor in uh, the portal, uh, in Class Connect to lock the students down and say, you know what, you're not going past unit two tonight, I know you're bored and you know you want to, but tell them to go in there and free play, give them some sort of crazy assignment instead. Uh, but you, you do have the ability to shut them down so they don't go through all the curriculum in one night. Okay, and then a couple more that came in. Um, is Wonder Workshop software compatible with Chromebooks? Uh, yes, it is. I'm going to post the uh, the link to makewonder.com. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'll post the link to the Chromebook software. Uh, and then also a couple more. Uh, will student subscriptions transfer to different schools or teachers? Ooh. That's interesting. Um, you can share students or a classroom with another instructor who's part of our system, but that is usually relegated to within a building or within a district. Um, I mean, we have the ability to pull an account from one location and place it in another. Uh, you may not have the ability to do that. So. Uh, if you were one teacher and there were 10 of you in the building and we had set up a school license for you, you would be able to transfer students and classrooms between the 10 teachers in the building. If we set up a district license for you and you were in 10 different buildings, that might be a little bit trickier. We would have to do that from our end, but it can be done. Awesome. And then uh, another question that we had come in, uh, I know you said no iPads, but would this be available on a Samsung device? Uh, yes, it's supposed to work on Android devices, uh, period. It's supposed to, I do not have an Android device, uh, so it's the one that I haven't tested, but it works on my Kindles, it works on my iPad, works on my Mac laptop, and it works on my PC la or laptop as well. So um, for the big five, I nailed down. I don't have a Chromebook, uh, but I, I would think an Android tablet would work. It's on the compatibility list. Awesome. Uh, I'm trying to see if we have any other questions uh, that we didn't get to address. Is there, were there any other questions that anyone had or wanted yeah. to ask while we have Tim on the phone? Yeah, or, if we I'm miss assuming. something, let us know. You can, you can unmute your microphone if you want to, if it typing's too difficult for you. Some folks are on their phones. As always too, if there are any questions that pop up after this, uh, after this meeting, uh, you can always reach out to me. I'll pop in my email into the chat so you guys have it. You can always reach out to me for any questions that you have. I talk to Tim pretty much on a daily basis. Um, so, you know, you can always feel free to reach out to me. I can always get into contact with Tim. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions you have. Yeah, please, you guys. Uh, Jake is very knowledgeable. And like you said, we, we talk daily and if you need something and he's not able to provide it, he knows where to go to and I will provide it. So, and we're, we're here to work with you guys. You know, that, that's first and foremost, if you're familiar with our company, if you're not familiar with our company, we bend over backwards for our teachers. That's what we do. Um, it, it, it's from providing good curriculum to giving you the most durable tool on the market to coming up with a way to allow you to teach during a pandemic. That's what we do. We do it very well. Uh, if you have something, you have a need of something, we're going to do everything we can to take care of it. Um, so, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. You tell me what the situation is or you tell Jake what the situation is. We'll find a way to work with you. That's what we want to do. 
also, I wanted to mention, um, if you guys would like to see Wonder Workshop Robots in action, we actually have a session on uh, Thursday, July 30, 23rd at 12 p.m. with our tech squad. They are our product demo guys. Um, they basically, they go to schools and they demo all the robots we have available. Part of the demo that they're doing on um, Thursday is elementary school STEM, which the Wonder Workshop Robots will be uh, featured on. So please, uh, if you go to our um, virtual summit page, you can see that, um, you can see the link to sign up. So please sign up if you would like to see those robots uh, in action from our tech squad. I will also be moderating that session as well. Um, so you can ask me questions then too. And, th and th that's something that, you know, we should talk about is the fact that uh, tech offers an unbelievable support system with this product line. Okay. They, their guys know our product as well as some of the people at headquarters. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they're, they're a team of trainers and, and, you know, they're in place. They've been working with us a while now. They know our product in and out. Uh, you know, these folks will give you the support that you need to put the product into your school, to have robots, to have the virtual robots. They have it all. They're going to take care of you. Uh, and they do a fantastic job. They really do. I watch their professional development. I, I, I go on the Otis platform probably more than I should, but I do enjoy it and it's fun and they do a good job. So yeah, you can trust them and lean on. And uh, Jill, to answer your question, yes, we will be sharing out this recording with everybody uh, later in the week. You will get an email with a link to the recording, and you'll have the ability to share that with anyone uh, that you need to. There you go. All right. No more questions. See, Jake, I'm getting good at this, man. When there's no <laughs> questions, I figure out my presentations are better. Uh, uh, we answered most of the number stuff. Do you have any documentation that would help me with pacing? Hmm. Like a scope and sequence, Donna, that is available on our website. If you go under curriculum, our scope and sequence is there for both products, for Dash and for Q. Um, pacing. I mean, when it comes to coding, it's not your typical pacing. Uh, you're going to find some students that are really good at it with no plausible explanation as to why it's just the way their brains think. And you find some other kids that struggle with coding because that's the way their brain thinks. So pacing is kind of tricky. You kind of got to let the kids progress at their own rate. Um, but I think you will get a feel for it as your kids start going through it. Uh, you know, make the first set of lessons all the way up to unit three available and look for your superstars. You'll know who they are. They'll finish everything in the first day. Uh, and then look for the kids who are struggling a little bit and determine whether that is, you know, uh, uh, because, you know, the home situation is no good. Uh, they don't have a computer to work on or whatever the case may be. But if you've got students who are struggling a bit, you've got students who excel a little bit, try getting them together in the same group and watch the kids who struggle. Uh, pick up the pace a little bit because they're seeing somebody do it who knows what they're doing and will mimic and uh, uh, follow along. So um, pacing's tough because everybody works at their own pace when it comes to coding. It, it, that's the only real explanation to give you. Mm -hmm. And then one last thing, uh, any, do you have any info on iPad integration that you can share or that we can send out uh, after the session? Uh, all I have is what my engineering team told us at our last uh, hands on, uh, all hands. Um, and that was that the uh, integration for the iPad is still on the board. Uh, it's finished, but right now they're going through the steps of getting it okayed um, with, what do you call it, uh, in the App Store. Uh, that takes some steps to do. And then once that's all done, it, it, it'll launch. Uh, and we'll make a big deal out of it when it happens. But right now it is slated for August the 17th. Um, so if you sign up for our emails or uh, text emails, you will get word of that when, when it launches, I promise. Awesome. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Uh, anything that you guys still are not sure on, want them to go over? Okay, this is good. Awesome. Well, yeah. again, guys, we will be sending uh, an email out later in the week with this recording. Um, if you have any questions, I drop my uh, email and phone number in the chat. Please always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, happy to answer any questions you guys have. Happy to get you in contact with the tech rep if you need a quote for Class Connect or any other Wonder Workshop options. Um, and I can always get in contact with Tim if anything's needed directly from Wonder Workshop. Absolutely. We, we, we'll take good care of you, we promise. Um, I will thank you again for your time, for everything you guys are uh, doing for your students and for the schools. Uh, 
uh, you know, it's my hopes that everybody goes back to school in whatever capacity they can safely. Uh, and you still find a way to have fun and teach the kids a little something, something this year. Going to be a tricky year, but uh, I, I, all my friends are teachers and everybody I work with is a teacher. If there's any group who's ready to tackle something like that, it's going to be you guys. So go out there and get them, be safe and, uh, you know, fingers are crossed. Good luck. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Stay safe and uh, hope you all attend some sessions later in the week. All right. Thank you.